What's going on streamers? Today's video, I'm going to be going over the settings here in Streamlabs desktop. This is catered to beginning streamers and it's going to be just an overview of the settings. So if you go down here to the gear, this is going to be the settings. Now I'm not going to be going into great detail on all of the things here in this video. I just want to do an overview so you guys can understand some of the things here in the settings. But if you're looking for more of a deep dive, then I suggest taking a look at the previous playlist where it talks about Streamlabs OBS. Pretty much the same stuff. I'm going to be going over these things in this playlist, but in separate videos. So eventually that stuff will get covered. But if you are looking for that stuff now, I suggest taking a look at the previous playlist. That way you can get that information today. But for today's video, let's go ahead and just jump into this and do an overview. So the first thing you're going to be looking at here is your generals tab. So choose the language that you want it to be. Honestly, I would probably uncheck the confirmed stream title and game before going live. This is only if you click the go live button that that thing comes up. But if you already set it up on the platform before even hitting the go live, then just uncheck that and then it shouldn't prompt you with that thing to come up. The disabling the hardware acceleration, this is an issue um, if you guys have problems with your alerts for some reason, the displaying or disabling the hardware acceleration can help that. And then if you're having some issues with your stream labels, then you can always click on restart stream labels. As long as you're pulling that information from Streamlabs, it should refresh all that stuff. But the other thing that I want you guys to pay attention to is the auto optimize and the OBS importer. So if you are wanting just a quick, ready to go, check my hardware, check my internet speed, what kind of settings you're gonna throw at me type thing, then use the auto optimize. If you're wanting to use stuff from your OBS studio, then you're gonna to wanna to import your stuff from OBS by clicking on the OBS import. A lot of the other stuff, you can kind of just go through and check it if you want it. I don't really mess with anything else here, but again, this is just an overview. For the stream, these are the different platforms that you can stream on, or you can do the multi-stream by adding a different destination. If you're using Prime and stuff like that, you can connect multiple together and stream to multiple locations if you have Prime. Now for the stream to custom ingest, this is if you are going to be streaming to different places um, that are not listed. So if you click on the show all services, this is gonna give you the list of all the different services that you can stream to. And if you don't see that, you go to custom server and choose the URL and stream key and you're good to go. For output, there's two modes, simple, which is very easy to do. I would just leave it on simple for beginners. Uh, very quickly, Video bitrate, I do cover in another video. I'll link it in the video description below, but essentially it is your upload speed for your internet. This is important for your stream to actually look good, not choppy and grainy or lag or anything like that. If you have questions about it, we can talk about it in the comments. I will cover this in another video when I do the more deep dives. But again, take a look at the bitrate video that I have in the video description below if you're wanting to learn more about that today. For your encoder, there's gonna be stuff for software, which is your processor, hardware is your graphics card. Essentially, you're basically taking the stream and having either your processor handle all the hard work or you're having your graphics card handle all the hard work. Now, the Invents is gonna be for your GeForce graphics cards. I don't use an AMD graphics card, so I don't know how that would work, so I can't answer any of those questions for that. Audio bitrate, you can leave it at 160, but it's probably better to go to like 192 and maybe even higher than that. But I usually just leave it at 160. For recording, you can choose wherever you want those files to go. I would leave the recording quality to high quality, MP4 for the format. And then again, the encoder can be either your software, which is your processor, hardware, graphics card. And then the replay buffer, I'll get into another video. For your audio, your sample rate, you can leave at 44.1 or you can put it to 48. For channel, leave it on stereo. 
for your desktop audio. I leave it at default unless you want to set it to something else. And then for microphone, this is going to be the microphone that you are using whenever you are streaming, whether it's a blue snowball, a headset, something that you are using, you can choose from the list of options that you'll have. Like for me, this would be the one that I'm using, but I'm using OBS Studio to record my Streamlabs. So this one I can't put here because it's being used elsewhere. For video, if you are streaming in 1080p, leave your base canvas at 1080p and your output at 1080p. You don't have to worry about the downscaling. And then for the FPS type, just leave it at common FPS value. And if you were wanting to stream in 60 frames per second, then leave it at the 60 FPS for the value. Hotkeys, very easy to understand. Basically, you have a list of things that could be used. So if you want to start your stream, instead of clicking go live, you can just click in here and then you can choose something like F7. So when you hit F7 on your keyboard, it's going to start the stream. And then if you wanted to have something like F8 to, uh, or I hit space on accident, but if you want to hit F8 to stop the stream, then you can stop the stream that way. Same thing with recordings and so on and so forth. Hotkeys are really cool. I'll go into this in another video as well. I do cover hotkeys a little bit in the previous playlist, but I'll be retouching on this again. Advanced, this it, this needs its own video. Uh, I personally, I wouldn't touch really anything in here other than maybe the processing priority. So this will tell your computer that, hey, I want the Streamlabs to have more priority of needing to be processed than the other stuff on my computer. So when you do that, it might make your CPU and stuff go up a little bit more. It might make your computer a little bit louder, depending on your specs of your computer. For the format of your videos and stuff like that. So for this, I would do 709 and this I would do full. This should make things look a lot darker richer and stuff like that and then i wouldn't really go into much of all this stuff just yet this is a lot of stuff to kind of talk about and i'm going to cover that later on scene collections so if you have any scenes from like obs you can bring them over by importing the overlay file if you purchased any of them from a designer they should be able to have given you the file to import them if you're wanting to export them to somewhere else or if you wanted to export them to bring them to another computer or to an event or something like that just so that way you had it in case you couldn't access it you can always export the file I do cover how to import and export overlays I will link that video in the description below as well for you guys to check out notifications very self-explanatory you can either enable them give them a sound if you have any frames that skip you can go ahead and give it kind of like a percentage of how much before it gives you a detection and then you can also enable that as well for your appearance you can change the look of your streamlabs desktop with prime i don't know exactly how that would look because i don't use prime i leave it in night mode but you can also put it in day i'm not going to blind you guys so i'm leaving it in night <laughs> for your chat settings adjust the size of them you can enable the better twitch tv emotes and so on and so forth and you can have it to where the chat which is over here you can have it to where it docks over on the left or the right and that was in appearance and then of course you can show announcements for new features and stuff like that personally I would click that off so for remote control this will allow you to use the Streamlabs um, they call it a Streamlabs deck. It's basically like a stream deck, but it's for your um, it's for your phone and stuff like that. So where you'll be able to access like your scenes and stuff like that. And I do cover this in a video as well. I'll link it in the video description below. These are all like previous videos from the older playlist. They're still relevant. They still help, but I'm always going to recap these things later. But it's in case if you guys want to learn about it now. Virtual webcam, I'll go over that in another video. 
game overlay is fantastic. So if you are only on a single monitor and you are wanting to see your chat, but you don't want the chat to be shown on stream, but you're only able to like play the game, you want to have the chat somewhere on the side of the screen, this will allow you to do that. Now, it works for most games, but not all games. And you would have to run them in like full screen mode. And it says here for best results, they recommend you running the game in windowed full screen mode, which should work for most games. But I do cover that in another video as well. So that way uh, you guys can try that stuff out today too. But like I said, I'm going to get there. This playlist is just going to be full of a lot of stuff that I've already covered. But it's, it's newer stuff for like how I would explain it and everything and then of course support and prime and then logging into wherever it is you need to log in for your streams but guys that is pretty much a quick rundown overview of the settings and like I said I don't want to go into too much detail on it because I could be here forever there's a lot of stuff to kind of talk about but if you found today's video helpful be sure to comment like share and subscribe and Let's talk about whatever questions you have in the comment section below and also be sure to take a look at the videos that I mentioned that are in the video description below if you're wanting to learn more today as I eventually get to those videos in this playlist. But thank you guys so much for watching. Check out these videos here on the screen and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.